people that are depending on their livelihood for port and port related businesses, um, they need money to help buy groceries until this gets back to some sort, form of normalcy. Alec Hadjimahalis of Ace Logistics is worried about how long he can keep his 200 employees on the payroll. One week after the bridge collapse. We're um, talking to our competitors and they're laying off 30 people, 40 people, 50 people a week. If this turns into a six month or a year thing, I could see us laying off 50, 75% of our workforce. It's the worst case scenario for a company that has been thriving for more than two decades. Myself, my brother who owned this business um, are both besides ourselves because it took a lifetime to get to the point that we're at. And um, we are remaining loyal to the port of Baltimore, but we may have to explore opening facilities in other ports. Many businesses and longshoremen whose livelihoods came to an abrupt halt when the Key Bridge collapsed are looking to state lawmakers to pass emergency legislation to provide financial assistance. The Port Act will provide relief for small businesses to pay their workers until operations can resume. Beyond that, the federal government is committing to help businesses stay afloat with economic injury loans up to $2 million. We have, under the Biden-Harris administration, moved to deploy uh, 12 months of deferment uh, on payments and interest, meaning interest does not accrue. Uh, those payments are not due for 12 months so that businesses can use this cash, this capital, uh, to really maintain payroll, uh, maintain their overhead, uh, be able to continue to survive in the community. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers expects to open a limited 280 foot wide access channel to the Port of Baltimore within the next four weeks and reopen the permanent 700 foot wide channel by the end of May. Weather and murky water conditions as seen in this underwater 3D sonar video is posing a challenge for crews working to remove the wreckage. Even though it looks like it's static load, once you start cutting things, there are some tremendous forces of weight forces that will bring things down. Now, this is literally thousands of tons of both steel and concrete. Oscar Barton is the dean and professor of the Mitchell School of Engineering at Morgan State University. Well, it's unclear how long it will take to rebuild the bridge. It'll probably it'll be a stronger bridge. I think that the footprint may be uh, uh, bigger, but I'm almost assured that you will start to see these large concrete piers protecting the uh, pylons of the bridge. And that will at least give some um, protection for potential impacts. I'm Nancy Yamada for State Circle.